All right, World War II in the Americas, last chapter, economic and diplomatic effects of the Second World War on Canada and on Mexico. Now, diving into the content, let's start off by talking about Canada. Uh, the Great Depression is going to lead to intercontinental cooperation between Canada and uh, the other countries in the Americas. Remember, Canada uh, previously was very, very closely aligned to the United Kingdom, and pretty much whatever Great Britain was doing, Canada was going to be doing as well. However, the Great Depression is going to cause that to change uh, really out of necessity. We're going to get the Ogensburg Agreement, which is a mutual defense agreement between the United States and Canada. And this is going to happen as a way of deterring Axis aggression against Canada. They kind of believed that most of the Axis powers would not directly attack the United States. However, they could directly directly attack Canada because Canada wasn't quite as powerful as a country uh, at this time as the United States was. So if you get this mutual defense, uh, a mutual defense agreement, an attack against one is an attack against both, uh, it's going to be a way of kind of protecting Canada. Uh, the United States was going to be weary of uh, and wary of integrating Canada into the Pan-American Union. Um, the reason they did not want to let Canada into the Pan-American Union is because Canada is still a part of the Commonwealth. They felt that this is going to be kind of a violation of the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, or again, rem uh, remember the Monroe Doctrine is no European influence in the Americas. Uh, Canada, because it's a Commonwealth, it's still got to kind of relate to the United Kingdom. Therefore, if Canada is a part of the Pan-American Union, it's kind of like bringing the United Kingdom as a way between uh, and some influence into the Pan-American Union, which is a violation of the Monroe Doctrine, something the United States does not want. Uh, so they're going to be out of the Pan-American Union. Um, however, they are going to be kind of a go-between between the United States and the United Kingdom because Canada's kind of friends with both. It's like when you have a friend um, that's friends with someone, like you have two mutual friends, but you don't really know the other person. It's that same way. The United States, the United Kingdom don't really know each other very well. Like they both know Canada very well, and Canada is happy to be the go-between between the two. Then we're going to get the Quadrant Conference in Quebec uh, in August of 1943. When we get here, Churchill and FDR are going to meet, and they're going to discuss a couple different plans. The first discussion they're going to make uh, is plans to invade France across the English Channel. This is ultimately going to be the initial steps of the D-Day invasion plan. Uh, so we're going to invade France. We're going to invade France through the United Kingdom. Churchill's like, you can come in and use my country. We'll go in from here. Also, they're going to talk about developing the atomic bomb with the United Kingdom and Canadian assistance. Remember, we've already talked about the fact that the Canadians and the British were also involved in the Manhattan Project. This is going to be happening right through here. At this co uh, conference, they're going to secretly agree to share nuclear technology um, so that the technology developed by the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom would also have access to and vice versa. Uh, Canada is going to have little influence on the actual course of the war. Um, however, their uh, position in the war is ultimately going to um, give them the position for strength after the war. They're the ones who ultimately kind of organized the uh, Quadrant Conference. They hosted the conference. Uh, so because they're doing this, they're kind of positioning themselves to have a good uh, good post-war settlement and to make sure they're in a position of power after the war. Uh, they're not going to be able to compete with the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Soviet Union when it comes to sheer power. However, they can get good and friendly with the United States and the United Kingdom to make themselves be in a good position post-war. Question, comments, put it down below. Otherwise, see you later. Good luck.